Hey, what's up, guys? We're at this place called Forever Labs. So uh, it's very simple, 15-minute procedure in which they extract stem cells from your marrow, and you've got access to those cells pretty much as the name implies, forever. So I'm gonna go through this process today to show you what it's like, and as you watch, you can leave your questions. I also have hooked you guys all up with a great discount at any of the, uh, or for any of the Forever Labs treatments. You get 250 bucks off. Use code Greenfield. Now check this out. Uh, we've got all sorts of different athletes that do this procedure. Fully legal, right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Th this is something that, you know, this isn't one of those fringe procedures that you gotta travel to Europe to do. I'm in, I'm in uh, very near Berkeley, California right now. Uh, one of the top doctors is gonna be doing this procedure, Chad Roger. And uh, if you come this way, we've got uh, all sorts of other athletes who have undergone this procedure. Some pretty serious triathletes. And uh, it's gonna be basically a chance for you guys to ask your questions about stem cell treatments and how they work. So if you have questions as we go, let me know. And uh, in the meantime, if you want to check in here, we have, hello, what's your name? Mark Kenikowski. This is, this is Mark Kenikowski? Kenikowski, yeah. Kenikowski. Yeah. So back Sorry. here, this is, a, this is a centrifuge? This is, yeah. This is the centrifuge at all. So once you extract the stem cells, they will, they'll go into this centrifuge? Yeah, and I'll separate out your nucleated cells and your plasma and the red blood cells. And we're after the nucleated cells, that's where your stem Okay, so are. the nucleated cells would be the ones that you can then take and you can store those. Exactly, that's what we're gonna do. And then you can also re-inject them into, what would, what would be the purpose for re-injection? Primarily joint? People generally do it for joint, yeah, joint. Mm -hmm. like orthopedics use it for joint injuries, sometimes after surgery to promote healing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What about general longevity, if someone wanted to just do this for... Well, that's what we're working um, on. Okay. That's absolutely that's, what we're working on. Like a, like a decrease in the rate at which telomeres shorten or something like that, or? You could rejuvenate your bone marrow with your younger bone marrow. Rejuvenation okay. of bone marrow. Yeah, Very interesting. Can, and how long will these store after you've actually had them extracted and, and spun? Well, there's evidence in the literature that 20 years is fine. 20 years? Yeah, I mean, okay. th without you know significant degradation after 20 years. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and we'll, we'll find out if we can, how far beyond that. But Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Nice. Yeah. I like it. All right, I'm going to... Uh, got it. Okay, so what's the next step? Right, what do right. we do? We... Uh, Go in and see the doc? Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. You care if I leave, if I have my bag there? Is that cool? Oh, no, that's great. Okay. Got my boys, River and Taryn here. Hey, boys, show me this brochure. So if you guys see, basically, very, very simple here. It's called Forever Labs, Save Your Youth. And uh, basically, if you check out the brochure, your stem cells will never be as young as they are today. And this is the procedure you're going to get to see. They collect the stem cells. They cryogenically freeze them and then you have access to that reservoir for rejuvenation or to fight age-related disease. And uh, these particular stem cells, now, now is this different than the stem cells you'd get from, for example, like fat or, yeah, so in uh, fat, or an umbilical cord? So in fat, there's overlap. In fat, there's mesenchymal stem cells, and you also find those in the bone marrow. Um, in the, um, very, there's a very big overlap between the bone marrow and the, the umbilical cord because you not only have the mesenchymal stem cell, but you also have hemopoietic stem cells, which make your blood and immune system. So we get all those. Okay, so every, you can get everything from bone. Well, you can get those that build the blood, bone, connective tissue, cartilage, and also those that build your blood and immune system. Gotcha. So you get a little bit of everything. Yeah, and some that build vasculature. Amazing. Well. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like your scarf, by the way, bro. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look good it. for Facebook. <laughs> what do you think? What? You think you, need, you think you need some of your bone marrow to rejuvenate you? You guys know when you're, if you're watching on Facebook, I'm curious. Would you do this for your kid when they're, for example, a teenager? Now, how, how old would, it, would a, a youth or a young person have to be to get this procedure so, done? Right now, actually, if you're um, under the age of 18, we won't do it. And that's mm -hmm. really just for um, liability purposes, to be quite honest. But the younger you are, the better it is to do that's it, That's right? true. Because so, your cells Here's are younger. an example. So my wife and I just had a baby um, five weeks ago now, actually. And we stored our, our daughter's umbilical cord. Your, her umbilical cord. Yeah. And then when she's 18, will you do will you do bone as well? Do you think we, we won't really have to? Right. So I mean, the, re got <clears throat> the reality is, is, when you and I were born, we didn't have that option. 
right? right. And that's why Forever Labs exists. Now, if everyone right. was banking their umbilical cord, um, we wouldn't we wouldn't have to exist. Mm -hmm. You know, we would have right. uh, everything we need. So, um, if you're a prospective parent out there, bank the cord blood. Yeah, you hear that? If you're a prospective parent, bank the umbilical cord blood. And can people just do that at the hospital? When, like, yeah. When they when they have their baby? Yeah. I mean, I, I would use some foresight and yeah. you know line up who you want to work with ahead of time. Of course, half um, our viewers are doing home births, so. Might yeah, be. you can do it at home. You, you can figure it out. You can do it at home. You, can, yeah. you really can. I, I, yeah. I think you could probably do it yeah. at home. But it's important. I, I, I would highly recommend it. Now, right. um, if you didn't do it and you have a kid, don't worry. That's why we exist. When they're 18, we will store their cells. Now, uh, between the ages of really when you're born and like 30 years old, there's not a huge decline in the number and function of the cells. So, you know, if you're in your 20s still, you, you probably want to have this done. It's like the optimal time to have it done. Uh, when you reach around 30, you start to have a decline in the number and function of these cells. Uh, that accelerates as you get older. Right. So, so I'm, I'm 35, so I'm still, like, I'm getting a huge advantage here by having these in the bank. Yeah. Because um, I'm just a few years beyond when they're starting to decline. So when I'm 60, when I'm 70, I'm going to have access. Well, technically, you said they stay for about 20 years. No, but. no, no. So what he's saying is that there's evidence going back 20 years. So if you freeze these things properly, which, of course, we do, and then you reanimate them or, or unfreeze them and thaw them properly, the time in between really doesn't make much of a difference. So these are stored in liquid nitrogen, so they're rendered biologically inert. They're literally no longer aging. So Ben Greenfield, you said 34? 35. 35. 35. 35 year old Ben is going to be 35 for 100 years from now, you're going to have access to those right. cells. Right? So I, I can access my 35 year old self when I'm freaking 70, 80, 90, yeah. for whatever I want to use it for. And so the, the thing we're most excited about so you'll have these cells to treat things. There are like 500 clinical trials using these cells to treat age related diseases like cardiovascular disease, stroke, osteoarthritis, Alzheimer's. But what we're most excited about is like 35 year old Ben, when you're 45, mm -hmm. grow these cells start reintroducing them intravenously not to treat any sort of disease just to keep aging yeah, health bay. maintenance yeah right? so so after yeah. i get this procedure you guys can ship them up to me yeah they, be they belong to you you can do whatever right. you want with now them. can you do a yeah. push iv with these or do you need to have like a, a doctor administer them via iv so what i would say is that uh, in the u.s outside of an fda approved clinical trial you can't grow these cells and reintroduce them right so you have to be part of a clinical trial now these cells belong to you though we, we don't hoard them proprietarily right if you want to ship them anywhere we will so if you decide you want to go somewhere uh, where they will grow them and reintroduce them we, uh, we'd be happy to facilitate that right now the one thing I want to mention, though, is at Forever Labs, we're also doing science. So we're actually doing hard science and work where we're taking cells in young mice, taking from young mice and putting them in genetically matched older mice to show that it will extend their healthy lifespan. And we're optimizing that right now, laying the preclinical groundwork so that in humans, we can do the same thing. So what we want to do is in five, six years, under the good graces of the FDA, do an FDA-approved clinical trial where guys like Ben and hopefully you guys can take your cells that you stored with us, start reintroducing them uh, to uh, rebolster your bone, blood, immune system, your connective tissue, your vasculature. That's what the bone marrow does. So, um, pretty excited about the capabilities we're going to have. Want to do it under the good graces of the FDA in the U.S. Um, but to that end, if if that didn't happen, these belong to you. We'll ship them anywhere you'd like. Right. So if I'm on vacation in the Cayman Islands, for example, people bring that up I could <laughs> I could go there and I could be like, hey, I want you guys to to reinject these, yeah. and you guys would just ship them to wherever I wanted to have them. That's correct. Ship. And we charge a flat three hundred dollars to do that anywhere in the right. world. So we're not right. we're not trying to make a lot of money on on the shipping the cells anywhere. We want this yeah. to happen. We want you to be able to use them. Yeah. How many people are going rogue? And you don't have to ask this question, but how many people are going rogue and just ordering them and rejecting them here in the USA? You know what? Honestly, um, I, I can say, I will answer this question for the first and only time and say that no one is so far. Really? Yeah. No one is so far. Um, but from what I understand, I mean, you can literally just like mainline these things into a vein. Like, yeah, so well, here's the reason. Well, so we're, we're a two-year-old company, no, no. right? Mm -hmm. And so the cells that we're storing right now, the oldest we have are, are, for example, I'm 40 years old. My stem cells are 38. The difference between my 38-year-old stem cells and my 40-year-old stem cells, probably nominal. Mm -hmm. When I'm 45, now I'm starting to think I might want to take those 38-year-old stem cells, grow them, and reintroduce them. Does that make right. sense? So we need to have this delta. But you need to you grow bank. them as well. Yeah. So when you guys are banking these cells, they're mm -hmm. not actually growing. They're just banked. That's correct. And there's a really good reason for that. So um, the technology to expand and grow these cells is improving all the time, number one. Number two, 
As Mark mentioned earlier to you, we have a number of different cells in the bone marrow. You've got mesenchymal stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, endothelial progenitor cells. And if we just grew one type and stored them right now, and then let's say 10 years from now, you wanted to have access to those uh, HSCs because you, let's say, you know, unfortunately you got a blood cancer or something like that, but we didn't store, because we expanded first, you would be a little upset. Plus, um, you expand these cells uh, under conditions for what you want to apply them to. Does right. that make sense? Yep. So it's not like, hey, they're just expanded, let's use them. You have to expand them in a way that is um, you know, congruent to how you want to use them. But some athletes, for example, like guys like me, will come in, mm -hmm. get them taken out, Same then day. get them injected yeah. into, let's say, a joint. Yes. Now, once you've injected, is that, are they all gone? And there's none left to no, grow? No, 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 no. So what will happen is um, the, the physician will take out 60 cc's of uh, your cells, expand them, or not expand them, I'm sorry. I'll put them in the centrifuge and spin out the red blood cells and reintroduce those mononuclear cells into the area you want. And let's say you had an elbow. They'll put them right. in your elbow, shoulder, whatever. Um, they'll also take another 60 cc's out, put it in the centrifuge, run it again, and we'll bank that. Gotcha. So it's not as if... Um, and by the way, uh, that'd be 120 cc's, which is roughly 4% maybe of your total bone marrow mm -hmm. in your body. And the body um, reproduces it relatively quickly. It's like giving blood. Right. You know, your body will reproduce that blood and regenerate right. it. So, because that's one of the questions people always ask is, hey, aren't you worried you're taking this? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Am I going to be hobbling around for a week with no bone marrow? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's not the case. In fact, I think what you'll be surprised to find is how quickly you recover and just go right back to normal yep. function. You'll have a little bruise on your hip. Right. We go right back to uh, yeah, you know, yeah, being bent. I've done a lot of <laughs> I've done a lot of injections and withdrawals, so I'll be I'll be used to the bruise. <laughs> yeah, on you're the like hip. a pincushion. Yeah, I am. I'm a human <laughs> pincushion. Oh, in and out. All right, cool. So, want to meet Dr. Roger? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go meet the doc. You guys want to meet the doc? All right, let's do this. We can do it now. All right. You're so you're Dr. Roger? I'm Dr. Roger. Okay, you're, you're, nice you're greeting you. me on Facebook. Yeah. I know it's awkward for me to be holding a phone as, as we greet each other. but <laughs> People do it more now than you think. Yeah, <laughs> one, of, one of San Francisco's best docs, you guys, and uh, this, this is the man when it comes to stem cells. So you're going to be the guy doing the procedure today. I'm the guy behind the troll car. All right, cool, <laughs> cool. So what's the next step? Well, come in, you know what? We'll treat this exactly how we would treat any other patient. So I'll give you kind of a discussion, what we talk to patients about. I'll show you the anatomy where we're going to obtain the bone marrow. Then we'll do a little view of the procedure room uh, where we'll show you the equipment we're going to use before we use it. Then I'll answer your questions and then we'll kind of get rolling. Amazing. We can actually be pretty interactive and you can even, if you, I don't know, one of your kids here film it or have some. Well, one of the boys is probably going to hold the camera <laughs> unless you guys have a social media person on staff who wants to, uh, no. wants to man the camera. Right. The, boy, the boys are pretty camera worthy, okay. right guys? When do you guys want to man the camera? Who wants it? All right. All right. You've been volunteered. You guys can tag team it back and forth. All right. Follow so, me. If you, see, if you see people uh, ask questions, boys, you can always ask me if you see in the comments there, people ask a question. All right. So you can actually YouTube and you can, you can show what he's showing, too. Bone marrow is obtained. But we have a system that we've gotten pretty good here, and uh, most of our patients have been pretty uh, pleasantly surprised about how uh, easy uh, the bone marrow aspect of the procedure uh, was for them. We lay you on your stomach, so we found a very good reservoir is from the iliac crest here. So mm -hmm. I lay you on your stomach, get you comfortable as possible, outline your anatomy, and what's special about our clinic is we use ultrasound so we can really outline the anatomy. Uh, experienced physicians can do things with palpation and that works very well, but if you palpate the anatomy, then visualize the anatomy with musculoskeletal ultrasound, mm -hmm. that makes the procedure very smooth and we think less uh, traumatic to the patient. So when I palpate your anatomy, then we'll anesthetize the whole area as much as we can to make you as comfortable as possible, especially the covering the periosteum over the bone. Mm -hmm. and then using ultrasound transducer, which is roughly the size of a cell phone, I'll visualize the anatomy, then we'll introduce the equipment, which is a stylus like this, and then it, it's inserted into the bone, and then when it's in the bone, we remove the stylet, oh, yeah. and then that we looks, have that looks comfortable. a central portion to obtain the bone marrow. Amazing. Yeah, and so what you'll feel, actually I spend more time, and I put this back in, and then we remove it, and then put a dressing on it. We actually spend more time um, doing uh, cleansing of the skin, doing mm -hmm. a good anesthetic technique right. than the actual, the actual procedure, procedure itself. Yeah, yeah. The procedure yeah. It, it can be uncomfortable. It varies from right. people who felt 
It was easier than going to the dentist. I did a fat yeah. extraction a few okay. weeks ago. Okay. So we did a story on fat marrow extraction. Okay. So, yeah. So, so it really varies. And that I was on the table for like, you know, 40 minutes, just, uh, you know, going yeah. in and out. To it's not going to be out. traumatic yeah. like that. And yeah. So we'll, when we're done, we put a Steri-Strip, a, a waterproof dressing that can be mm -hmm. removed in two days. And uh, the majority of my patients do not even need pain medicine when they leave. Amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So our clinic here, uh, we uh, partnered with Forever Lab because we do a tremendous amount of ultrasound guided procedures and we're an orthopedic sports medicine mm -hmm. group. And we're very excited that we're just on the tip of the iceberg on finding ways to have the body heal itself. I love it. And whether we can prevent a surgery by doing a uh, platelet procedure or a bone mm -hmm. made, uh, marrow procedure, or we can slow down the rate of degenerative change, we're looking for ways to keep people out of the operating room. Yeah. And so we're very excited. I think the science is in its infancy, and they're going to develop ways that maybe the you know you're 21, you, you injure your knee skiing, uh, maybe we can fix it at that point and we'll progress. I yeah. don't know. It's not there yet. But it, it's a potential, and so that's yeah. why we have partnered with Forever Lab because we see the potential, of maybe a big future as, as adjunctive care. In yeah. Medicine. yeah, very cool, yeah. very cool. So and, I think we're going to check after out we after yeah. we do the procedure. Are we able to, to actually inject and and earlier like today? Actually, I did that. I have a, a very common problem is loss of cartilage underneath the kneecap. Mm -hmm. The number one knee problem in women has to do with patellofemoral dysfunction. Right. And if you do physical therapy for appropriate training and get the muscles mm -hmm. lined up, but you've already lost cartilage, if you can inject right. underneath the kneecap and maybe stimulate some cartilage growth in right. addition to the appropriate exercises, maybe we can make better quality of life for these people. Right. So this morning we did a bone marrow extraction uh, and then we did an injection of uh, hyaluronic acid mm -hmm. with uh, platelet rich plasma yep. with bone marrow. And Amazing. we did it in a 40 minute visit. Amazing. All right, cool. I don't, know, do that I don't know if anybody, everything else. I don't know if anybody filled you in, but I'm a professional obstacle course racer, so okay. I'm always walking around with uh, with different injuries going on. Yeah, part of occupational have a hazard. Slight, slightly torn. So you want right this aspect of right medicine now. to so, work? So we can we can do the whole meal deal if you if you guys want to see it. There's a uh, lot of uh, you know studies being done. What's the best formulation actually for this? Is it platelet poor plasma? Is mm -hmm. it platelet rich plasma? Is it just the trauma of the needle that mm -hmm. creates some bleeding and some tissue healing? Right. So it, it's it's all a work in progress. A lot of studies being done. So yeah. as of this point, to actually treat you appropriately, mm -hmm. I'd have to do a, a diagnostic study, maybe you know physical exam and history, and then do it. But that'd be another sure. video. All right. <laughs> cool. Okay. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna show you around the room real quick. Okay. And then we'll then we'll we're gonna back off a smidge of and uh, get real serious to make sure we get this done right. Sounds here. good. Yeah. All right. So this is our procedure room. So guys, don't touch anything because everything's sterile in here. You guys understand what that means? You don't want the old man to Ster touch ster up something funny. Sterile means anything you yeah. touch becomes unsterile, aside from the chair. You can sit in the so, chair. We'll try to have you guys video uh, this a little bit when, when we're going so you can see you know, how this sound. helps me be more accurate. Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, so all of our equipment is underneath here. So what I'll have you do is I'm going to have you change into a pair of shorts. Mm -hmm. uh, you can leave socks on if you're yeah. cool. I've you got your shirt on. shorts on right now. Too. Yeah, yeah that'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Actually, that'll be fine for me. Yeah. And there are uh, boxers, actually. Yeah, that works yeah. if you're comfortable. I'm, I'm fine with that. My, my Facebook audience sees me in my underwear yeah. all the time, right, you guys? Okay. All right. All right. Then, we'll, then we'll get going. So if you guys, yeah, so you just have to take off shoes. Sounds uh, good. Shirt. You can leave this shirt on even if you want. Okay. And then we'll be back in in a second. All right. All right. And if you guys have questions on Facebook, uh, you can ask them there. Uh, does anybody have a question yet? Yeah, it says, is this the first time having this procedure? This is the first time having a bone marrow procedure, yes. I've done a fat extraction before uh, with the U.S. Stem Cell Clinic in Florida. And uh, I have a story in Men's Health Magazine coming out in January about that procedure. Uh, but this one is uh, this one is is different. This is bone. Um we might be able to show you guys uh, afterwards a reinjection if we decide to reinject afterwards. But uh, yeah. And then so. there is um, Ben. Didn't you have a bum knee during World Champs at the end of September? I did, but uh, I've kind of healed that up thanks to um, 
you know, a lot of times knee issues are quadriceps issues. And so I've healed that up by doing a lot of work on uh, quadriceps up here above the knee, and that's actually relieved all knee pain. So that's all, that's all taken care of. So. And then another yeah. one is, could uh, I do this at age 33? Okay. You can, absolutely. Yep. So, all right. We're going to have you lie on your stomach here, okay? okay. So your head's going to be up at the edge of the table. And the key for me is just to make you as comfortable as possible. Yeah. Again, it's going to spend more time me getting you set up yep. than actually the whole procedure wise. I'm sure move this River and Sarah, as long as you don't touch anything, you can stand mm -hmm. up if you want to. You know, get a slightly closer view or anything like that. It's just the main idea is to keep everything sterile. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to have my staff come in here and help me out. Sounds good. Because I stay sterile and then they can have me things. And it yeah. actually makes for a much quicker and better procedure when we do things that way. Find, find some issues back there. I've got a jacked right hip and a slightly torn upper right hamstring right now. Yeah, the perils of uh, perils of running around in the forest. There you go. That's good times, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I got to start doing some of these for myself here. Yeah. Right. River and Taryn, have you guys ever seen a, a medical procedure like this before? No. No. So this is. Uh, this is kind of like what a what a surgical room might look like if someone were going to get surgery. Very yeah. similar. Everything. Yeah, this is considered a procedure room where we can do minor surgical procedures in here. And actually, we do a couple outpatient uh, tendon surgeries in this room. So you just need the right equipment. This might be a little cold, okay? No, it's fine. I'm taking my cold shower today. All right. So actually... So I have excellent visualization, so you can pull that off. If you guys want to, with the uh, with the phone, you can kind of look at the ultrasound there to see what the ultrasound looks like as they visualize. Just don't touch the table, okay? Yeah. Just don't touch anything. So can, you, can you see that on your camera? And this is the area where we're going to watch my needle come right here, and then we're going to go into that bone right there. Isn't that cool? So you can see me kind of press from the side here. So this is right where I'm going to go in. So he's got a really nice landing point for me. So what's key for me is I just really make sure I feel his anatomy well. And I have excellent visualization of his anatomy. And when I have somebody, even though you're beaten up and full of a bunch of scar tissue, you're in shape. So his anatomy visualization is really rather easy. So I'm a nut when it comes to sterilizing. So I probably spent as much time. Good, Doc. I like to hear that. Yeah, I didn't. You know, most people haven't complained when I say there's one area where I get a little OCD. Right. And that <laughs> would be. Just get it done with. Jeez. You know, we probably could in a little <laughs> bit less time, but I don't want my first infection ever to be on right, live you, YouTube. You don't, you, don't want <laughs> you don't want a journalist to uh, to get infected. That could come back to bite no, you. Oh yeah, that'd be like, whoops. Guess that was a wrong choice. Right. So there are several different ways to people do these from different skin prep techniques. We'll probably get a bunch of comments from people uh, for what I chose to use, but the key thing is at the end I use some alcohol to, to rub it clean at the end. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have some, some orthopedic surgeons. Oh, they're, they're going to pipe in. Yeah, there's, no this, worse, that. there's no worse group of people than doctors for having an opinion on things. <laughs> that is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, actually. And we're going to, uh, Anybody ask any questions on Facebook, fellas? Yes. What do we got? Is this available in other states? No, you have to come see me only. <laughs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> not, not many physicians are businessmen. Nice job. No, we're really bad at it, actually. Hey, I, I will say, okay, so we're in, we are, Forever Labs is in nine states now. We're growing quickly. I will say that if I were to have it done again, uh, you are looking at the physician that I would probably yeah, choose to do it, Dr. Chad Rogger in, in um, the San will Francisco that, market. Will that code for people, that code Greenfield, work at any of the clinics? Yeah, so if you use the code Greenfield when you sign up, 
uh, you'll get $250 off the procedure, and that doesn't matter where. Anywhere in the U.S. that we have, we offer this, uh, that'll work. So uh, we're happy to offer that. Any other questions that came through yet, fellas? Ah, uh, no. All right. Do you guys have any questions? Nope. <laughs> pretty cool this is definitely the kind of field trip my dad never took me on so one per one person said does ben have dirty feet <laughs> <laughs> that's highly possible yeah, I, I can not, answer that and say yes, going there. yes <laughs> they look like it, they get you used, know the, the used last the last story that i did you'll get a kick out of this uh, do, do you pronounce your name dr roger or dr. roger roger yeah. roger 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 yeah. uh was a uh was a stem cell extraction and a reinjection mm -hmm. into the penis for a story for Men's Health magazine on uh, on all the things one could do to enhance one's member, and that comes out in January. And the wow. title of that article Talk is called it. "New Year, New Dick." Wow. And, uh, so that, that was an interesting one. Getting the stem cells. Did it work for you? Uh, you know what? Amazingly, uh, it did. Uh, Significant. Did, did your followers all agree with that? Uh, well, I, I don't jack my shorts down on camera, but I did have to use the, <laughs> I had to use the electric pump for 30 days after uh -huh. uh -huh. the injection. Yeah. Amazing. Made it that one along with PRP. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I hear that's a use yeah, for sure. And uh, men's health said they wanted to. Wait for me to head down and get the procedure done so I could use my crotch as a guinea pig. It's very brave of you. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't died yet. All right. You're not allergic to lidocaine, marcaine, any anesthetic that you're aware of? No. Nope. We are going to feel a little discomfort right now, okay? Yep. One, two, three. Full burn here. I'm going to actually go down to the bone. The so boys, he's putting that needle all the way down to the bone. What do you think about that? Yeah. Just getting that on, on the video? Yep. And, and the reason for this is for preparing the area to be resistant to pain. It's a, it's a, it's a numbing agent. So you can, you got the video on the screen there. You can actually see the needle moving right there and anesthetizing the periosteum. That ultrasound, boys, is the same kind of ultrasound they use to look inside women when they're pregnant to see what the baby's doing inside. Similar type of visualization. Okay. Yep. Okay. So let that sit in there for just for a second. No use to give you anesthesia if we don't let it work. Yeah. So boys, what that does is it makes everything numb. So this next part, uh, there are going to be a couple different things. I'm going to make a small incision in your skin. Uh -huh. Then I'm going to uh, introduce the uh, stylet. Uh, to the bone, you will feel a little bit of pressure, mm -hmm. and you'll hear a little bit of a whirring of, of a little electric whir. Right. And then you'll probably um, feel, and I'll warn you before this happens, kind of a, a little bit of a vacuum effect, and you might notice a little bit of a spasm in your low back. Right. So that's what's uh, coming up here. Okay. Right. You boys, as long as you're staying sterile, boys, you can try and get as much of this on camera as possible. Sound good? Okay. You need to stand up or whatever, that's fine. We did have someone I saw that asked, like, what is this procedure? So uh, for those of you that are just joining in, um, Ben Greenfield is having a bone marrow aspiration so that he can store his young adult stem cells so that he has access to his, his own cells like, for the rest of his life for therapeutic applications. So that's what's happening right now. Um, it's a company called Forever Labs. Um, you can go to foreverlabs.com to learn more. You can use the referral code GREENFIELD to get your uh, to get a two hundred and fifty dollar discount on the procedure. Jeez, I need to hire this guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Any other questions come through on Facebook, fellas? Is this therapy used for organ regeneration, like thyroid? Thyroid. Thyroid. Yeah. I feel a little pressure. Whoever labs you guys can just uh, kind of sit down on, on these on things. Camera? Yeah. yeah. What do you, What do you think, River and Taryn? Is it interesting? Have you ever seen a little surgery like this before? Oh uh, no. So now he's taking the the, uh, the marrow. Not uh, yet. Or I'm gonna feel a little pressure now. You yeah. ready? Yep. You okay? Yep. Quite as bad as the dentist. Well, we're not done yet. That is your father's bone marrow. Oh, it was blood. And inside that, there is a uh, mesenchymal. Mm -hmm. There are mesenchymal stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, endothelial progenitor cells. All this great stuff that, unfortunately, as you age, um, diminishes in quality. Okay, we're over half done. Okay. So, your dad is half done with it. Um, now they're taking his bone marrow and they're putting it in a centrifuge where they're going to spin out, uh, in another room, where they spin out his red blood cells uh, so that we can save his mononuclear cells. Cool. <laughs> They're gonna take it out of the machine and spin it round and round, fellas. Very, very fast. <laughs> very, very fast. Yeah. So the, uh, the hard part is over. Yeah. Hardly hurt me a bit, guys. <laughs> Hardly hurt me a bit. All right, take a deep breath. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, it's out. We're done. You guys catch that on camera? Of course. Yeah? Of course, they're seasoned <laughs> veterans over there, man. Sorry, how, how can the, I question The you? key grip on <laughs> these, guys are, these guys are professional podcasters. They All right, so now we got Lana and Laura, who are my trusted assistants here, and Shiraz. So now the crack team takes over, and we put on a very special dressing. Lana, you can describe what's happening while you do that. Oh, definitely. So we're just putting a little bit of pressure over the incision, just to make sure everything stops mm -hmm. bleeding and there's no bruising involved. And then the stuff that he used to clean everything up and take that out so mm -hmm. the skin doesn't get irritated. Right. So clean it up a little bit and we're just keeping pressure. How are you feeling? Fine. Good. Ben, the marrow looked great, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I've yeah. been working on my marrow lately. <laughs> <laughs> you need this is coming, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Oh, it's easy. Okay, great. Yeah, it's not, not bad at all. You know, a lot of people think bone marrow is going to hurt, but it's, it's really a little pressure. And, and did uh, you feel a cramp run down your leg at all? Yeah, you get a little bit of a spasm on the side, like a little muscle spasm. Yep. Yeah, I had that too. Yeah. Any questions, guys? Yes. Yeah, I know. It's it's very very. Yeah. Are Forever Labs going to be available 
available in the UK? Uh, yes. Uh, Forever Labs will eventually be available in the UK. Uh, currently, we are um, uh, not in the US alone, but that is the ultimate goal is um, by the end of the year to start expanding uh, overseas. And then there was another one that said, Do you gross the stem cells as needed treatments in the future? Yeah, so the idea is that you will be able to grow these cells. Currently, right now, Forever Labs doesn't because um, outside of an FDA approved clinical trial, you can't grow these cells um, in the U.S. Um, but that is the ultimate goal, and we are definitely working towards that end. And then there was another one that said, um, can stem cells be used to heal the leaky gut? I don't know the answer to that question. I think you should consult your physician about it, though. Um, I can tell you that there's over 500 clinical trials using the cells that your father just stored um, to treat age-related diseases. And if you go to clinicaltrials.gov and look up um, the specific application you're interested in, you, you can get more information there. You can also go to foreverlabs.com, uh, look at research there in our blog and get more information. Specifically for the hip, you mean? Uh, specifically for your lower body. Right. If you wanted to do some, you know, arm weights, it's fine. Right. But, like, no long hikes, no real heavy yeah. weightlifting. Yeah. Well, the boys aren't going to go on a little hike today, but it can be uh, easy, right? Huh. Yeah, yeah. No, just a we'll double check without your You're just saying just, just not a forceful muscle contraction exactly. there. Exactly, yeah. Just a nice, easy stroll should be just fine. Mm -hmm. don't, don't strain yourself, don't push yourself. You want to show the, the right spot, the bandage? Just to show that. Um, you just pull your hands back up. Just a small bandage afterwards. You want to see it real quick before I close it up? Sure. Just like that. Just that one little square. Okay, now yeah. I want you to sit up very slowly. Wait, let me another thing. What's that? I'm going to lower the table. Okay. okay. You might feel a little dizzy, so just kind of take a nice Would you like some juice? We have, um, oh, I'm fine. Thanks. Sure? That's good. Maybe a cup of water if you yeah, have an hour. Definitely. Do you want to see the instruments he uses? Yeah, sure. I'm going to come show you some stuff, so we'll leave it out. It's a little messy. Now it looks like we have a little little fiber. That's your mirror, Dad. Yeah, just a second. Let me move this fiber off of the, off the camera here. There we go. Roger will show you what he uses. Okay, so that's, that's the actual marrow. And so what we do here is, here I'll kind of lift up and show things to you guys. Is, um, so when you, right, first I, uh, I visualize your anatomy. Mm -hmm. I showed you kind of. I think your boys were able to get a good job of that. Yeah. Then we take this longer needle so I can get down there and anesthetize the periosteum. You know where we're right, right that covers the bone. Okay. And then I also it gives me a nice track so I can see mm -hmm. where I'm going. And then uh, this is what gets inserted after. Okay. And so what's kind of slick. What we here I'll show you this. So we take the stylet out here and that makes it hollow but then you can see here how mm -hmm. there's holes right there yeah it's almost like a guillotine huh? yeah but just... these, well these little holes there is, is how we're able to get the bone marrow mm -hmm. and so when i aspirate i aspirate a little bit turn a little bit turn a little bit so i'm not just getting blood i'm actually making sure i'm getting bone marrow mm -hmm. we actually i actually kind of pull it out slightly when i do so also okay and this is a kind of a newer thing that we're doing because before, you know, everyone's bones have a, like a little bit different uh, how hard they are, you know. Right. And so some people, you know, you get, you got to put pressure when you push in. And we use um, this little drill. And nice. that's what you heard. So this attaches there. You know, this is all sterile. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I use the drill and, and they're marked. So I know I go in just a couple uh, centimeters. And then when I'm in two centimeters, I know I'm right in the perfect spot. Mm -hmm. And it's finely controlled with the equipment. And so then I just remove that, and we aspirate, and then we pull out, and your body closes up behind you. Now, for someone to use these, mm -hmm. what you've just extracted, you won't grow, but you will bank, correct? Yes, the, with Forever Lab, uh, we bank. And mm -hmm. then they're, they have a whole different part of the company that's doing... You yeah, know, so a lot we, of the research yeah, and all. Yeah. And for me, uh, I got interested in regenerative medicine just because we're trying to heal tissue without always having to go to surgery. Right. And if we can harness the body's own ability to heal, uh, we can use that 
uh, in the rest of our practice. And you can see, you know, just watching the news and different things that athletes are doing, it's being uh, a lot of regenerative medicine is in practical use already. Yeah. But with uh, with companies that research that have scientific team behind them, you actually are are, are learning more about our body and our body's ability to regenerate and hopefully we can harness that in many different areas of medicine. Amazing. Our practice is just orthopedic sports medicine. Right, right. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, if you guys have more questions after you've watched this video, like my tattoos to left over from the race, shout out to Organifi. Sorry, your tattoos are disappearing. Uh, leave them underneath this video. Remember, you can go to foreverlabs.com. You can use code GREENFIELD to save 250 bucks off a procedure if you want to get one done. And I will jump in and reply to any questions that you have. Uh, but in the meantime, hopefully that educates you a little bit more about what a bone marrow stem cell extraction actually looks like and answer some of your questions about what you would do with these bone marrows afterwards. So thanks for watching. You're welcome for once again using my body as a guinea pig for uh, your entertainment and education because I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to uh, thank also, of course, our fantastic videographer team, River and Taryn. Nice job, fellas. All right. Boom, boom, boom. All right, you guys. Bye-bye.